My name is Devon and I am 35 years old. I'm originally from Chicago. I relocated to Texas because opportunity. I wouldn't say I was looking for a specific opportunity. I would say I was just looking for different opportunities. <laughs> so I applied at a bunch of different places. I just applied to a bunch of different stuff and the manager called me and I actually applied to be a manager. Uh, but anyway, he called me and he liked, you know, my rapport or whatever. So he hired me to work overnight because he said, you know, people who work overnight, they have to be trusted. Like they can't be watched. They just have to be given a list of things to do and work on it. So they love it when I play these, the more popular ones. Just in the nick of time. Oh, yes, sir. You know how it is. What is the pay at 7-Eleven like? It's 15 an hour. Um, it's not the worst, but it's not the best. So when I'm working, the duties include um, cleaning the restroom, uh, mopping the floors, um, wiping down the countertops, if you weren't here, I wouldn't be doing this shit. Replenishing like lids and cups for drinks, stuff like that. Regular store stuff. <laughs> I didn't have to do that much. We want some social sweets. Yeah, we got to do these. So maintaining the cleanliness of a 7-Eleven no, there is some difficulty there, uh, but it really comes down to, uh, for me anyways, it comes down to timing. So if there's a specific time when there aren't, you know, individuals or bodies in the, in the store, those are the best times to do the cleaning. Those are the best times to make sure that after you've cleaned, you know, nobody's coming up behind you messing stuff up. So, mm-hmm. There's only like two weeks left of this. Um, we were going through, what do you call it, a phase? And this this phase of my existence is coming to a close. Um, and, and it's not like a horrible, it's not a horrible job. It's not horrible. Um, it's just not the best environment to be in. And uh, I don't know, I'm trying to get out before somebody tries to rob this place. Because they've done it before. But yeah, we're almost done. I am trying to get out for somebody to rob this place, though. So. 
in the event of a robbery, we're supposed to wear these. We're supposed to wear it like this. And then if someone were robbing you, you press these two buttons like this. And it's supposed to alert someone. However, I have yet to use it. And I'm not sure if it even works anymore, but there ain't no light on it. Do you want to test it? So would I rather work the night shift or the day shift. I would prefer the night shift because there are less people. It's uh, more opportunity to get stuff done. And um, you don't have to deal with as many customers as you would during the day. Now, one of the downsides of the night is the, uh, the propensity to be robbed and the, uh, the exposure to, I guess, more instances of theft. So at night, people come trying to steal more often. That's like one of the main things that's a little annoying because people come in the store and you can tell that they're not, they're not gonna buy anything. Um, so I just like tell them like, hey, you can go. <laughs> Is there ever a time you deal with tough customers? Tough customers? Or do you ever feel your patience being tried while you're at work? Sometimes my patience does get tried by people like him. Uh-uh. Let me see the sandwich. I got, um... Let me see the sandwich. Yeah. Take your body and watch. He be coming in here playing around. I don't do no plan. Laughing and giggling. Man. He thinks it's Ooh, funny. I don't do no plan. I don't have anything with the sound. You ain't got no money for no jazz with this. Ain't nothing. I see. Mm -hmm. I see mm -hmm. it done. You know hey, sir. Welcome. Get out of here. Uh, I'm back in it. Uh huh. In it, in it, in it. Hey, what are you doing? Hard work. Hard work. Yeah, Hard work. Okay, so I've never worked this 7 Eleven through a full day. I've only worked, like, I think I worked one time from. I think it was like 2 p.m. It was like 2 p.m. through my regular shift. I think I did that one time. And I think I stayed through like 9 a.m. another time. But I've never been in there through like the middle of the day. So I don't know what type of characters they have coming in there during the day. Um, I know at night I get like a taste of what they deal with during the day. And I also know that during the day they had to call the police more often. Um, due to there being, you know, craziness going on with either the the locals, the homeless people, or, you know, some random person pulling up with something crazy going on in their car. Um, but that's usually what happens during the day. A lot of craziness goes on over there at night. Like recently, there was a detective at the store trying to interview about some incident that happened at the corner. They were asking us if they could get, like, camera footage. So that's a thing. Um, because it's in between Dallas and Irving, there's a lot that goes on between the two police departments, um, as far as who's willing to deal with what, who's coming to ask questions about what, who responds to what. So that's interesting to watch. Uh, it's a very interesting area over there. And I'm not sure if it's because it's off of what's called Harry Hines. So I don't know if that means like, like over there in that area, it's like, known for having like a prostitutional element. So there are a lot of people over there that participate in that, either being pimps, prostitutes, uh, Johns, or, you know, somewhere in there being all three at once. Um, but there's a lot of that over there. And I didn't realize how I don't know if the word would be pervasive, but I didn't under, I guess I didn't understand how intrinsic that was to some people's lives, like doing that. 
And so actually seeing it firsthand, uh, it's, that's a different perspective. That's a different perspective. It's, it's just shown me that you can't disrespect sex work. So like there's this stigma that comes with with uh, sex work. And a lot of times these people are just, you know, using what it is that they know to get by. And so even, I don't know, to me, the lowest person isn't the prostitute. To me, the lowest person is the pimp because he's literally relying on this this woman to get out here and do something. If she doesn't do anything, then they're both stuck. And like, I guess back in the day, like the pimp would have multiple girls. But uh, now what I'm what I'm seeing is like these guys have one girl. They have one girl. This is based on your time at Seven. Yeah. So a pro for working at Seven Eleven. Okay, um, one being the check, it's like an extra check, um, I guess another pro would be, um, the ability to interact with people, like, cause like I said, I work from home, so I don't get that ability a lot, um, I'm customer service, but I don't really get to interact with people, I'm just on the phone with them, but at the store I actually get to interact with people face to face. Um, so that's a pro. Uh, people tip me. That's a pro. It's always funny because people think that we get a discount and we don't. Um, it's so weird how none of these companies offer any type of incentives for their employees now, but it is what it is. <laughs> Cause that's, I don't know. To me, that's weird, but mm, it's not like any of them are losing any money, but they ain't doing nothing for the employees. All right, so a con of working for 7-Eleven, one of the main ones is that you can get robbed. Um, and I guess one of the downsides to that is if you do get robbed, you're probably going to lose your position. Um, so that is a little, uh, that's a little frustrating. However, um, I've become comfortable with that outcome. Uh and in addition, like, it's not going to be the end of the world. I'll just go get, you know, another job. Uh, the point of getting this job was just to kind of get some money in my pocket while I try to move to the next step. Uh, so it's like, if I lose it, I lose it at that point. I just hope I don't get robbed because I really don't feel like dealing with that. Like the police and the the people upset and people mad and they got the guns pointed now they want to take money out of the, the register and they're telling you to do it and you're like no i'm not doing this and now they want to shoot and that's the stuff i don't want to deal with so the customers are pleasant but um there are those that come in to to steal to put it plainly and you can tell because they they come in and they stand around. Like the store is small. It's not, you know, a massive store. So when you come in there, if you're in there for more than 10 minutes, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're not. And those are the people that I go after. Because why are you still here? So if they understand that that's what's going on, they won't feel like stealing. Because they're like, damn, if I come in here and I start stealing, he's going to say something. How often do you find yourself interacting with hostile or disgruntled customers? Mm. <laughs> it's at least once or twice a night, depending on the volume. And usually, if they're upset, it's not because of something that I've done directly. It's because of some sort of circumstance that has arised from something they were trying to do. So for instance, a lot of people have issues with the coffee, the coffee machines. The coffee machine is either not working or it needs to be cleaned or some random. And like, the thing is so particular, like you have to do it a certain way or the fucking coffee machine just won't work. 
it's like a special type of coffee machine. I mean, you, there's like three different types of coffee and you can pick, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, I don't know, for some odd reason it works when it wants to work. And I've had a couple of people get nasty with me about that, but I just tell them like, wrong person. Um, I've had a couple of people like, they'll be talking to me while I'm on the phone. Cause like, I'll be on the phone. Um, like I have my AirPods and I'll be on the phone. And people will be trying to talk to me, asking me questions and stuff, and I just won't respond to them. So I did have a couple people get upset about that. Like, oh, great customer service. And I'm looking at them like, did you miss your change? Did you not get what you went to the, the over there and grab? Did you not get that? Like, I'm confused, you know. Was I supposed to do something extra? It's a convenience store, you know. This isn't like Macy's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to be like, oh, yeah. no, we're not doing that. There's that, too. Like, instead of people coming to get what they came to get, they get sidetracked, so now they want to have discussions, and they want to laugh, they want to giggle, they want to do all this stuff outside of what they actually came for. And I don't want to tolerate that either. It's like, what'd you come for? Okay, let's get it, let's go, because... Mm -mm. And that, like, the reason I am that way is because I feel like that removes the uh, ability for there to be something like a robbery, for there to be something unnecessary going on. If there are people at a, at a location standing around, looking, laughing, giggling, they standing outside, they're in groups, more than likely somebody's gonna come in there trying to rob the place. But if there's nobody around, it's empty, you walk up to the door, you can't tell if somebody's in there or not, I'm gonna rob this place. Who the fuck am I robbed? Yes, I would recommend a friend to work at 7-Eleven, and I did recommend a friend to work at 7-Eleven, and he actually makes more than me now. But it's fine, because it's the second job for me. Thank you, come again.